No. Is there a room or a need for like new artists or are there like enough artists in the industry so they can just circulate and go from project to project to be already there? No, it's anytime. Bring them on. It's like it's it's getting now. It's getting more like someone else designs it and they just need a lot of animators. And then they use, like, they, you know, like motion capture? Or, like, somebody had the great idea, like, that's a really good idea, and it is for certain things. And then somebody tries to use it for, like, a 10 foot tall cave troll walking around. And he looks like he's jogging around, like he weighs, you know, 180 pounds. It doesn't work. So, all the, all the new guys coming in, it's like they're going to be throwing motion capture scenes to clean up. Uh, or you'll be throwing scenes just to start from scratch. You're, you know, throwing your own animation into it. But animators are still like the biggest thing that people need. They, uh, someone that can put put together a shot, like like for Previs. Previs is a huge place right now for for getting artists in that know a little bit of camera camera knowledge and have strong animation skills because they can build a scene very quickly. Man, other guys build all the stuff, but they can say, "All right, well, I need this character to walk over here, pick up that book, throw it down, run off." And you may have guys that can spit that out in like an hour. You know, it's rough, but still readable. And, that, and people are looking for those people all the time. Mm -hmm. The last numbers I had; these are a few years old. But the last numbers I had was every year in the gaming industry, five thousand jobs, new jobs, are open. So the industry is growing. It's one, what do you think? I mean, the gaming industry is making more money from Hollywood. I mean, it's been like that for a couple of years now. Um, so, you know, new jobs, I mean, how are they going to, you know, make that much money? Well, they're going to create new products. And they're going to need a lot of new products. So it's a great time for you guys. Uh, we have time for uh, about two or three more questions. Anything that's reaching your brain? Yeah. Do you think there's enough software out there for people to compete individually? So what again? Oh, yeah. What do you want software, software to get you know, free software? Oh, oh my gosh. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to call you out, Chris, right up here in front. Uh, grab the software called, what do you name it? Again? Silo. Silo. Uh, that stuff didn't exist back when we were learning this stuff. The education was not out there. I mean, we were sitting there going, how do we learn this stuff? We're not going yeah, it's, it's, some of them times are not ninety five dollars. Hash uh, anima animation master. Oh God, I love that. For ninety nine bucks. Yeah. Now, but now the technology from package to package is very similar. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it does not matter. You just just grab whatever, and it, if it's got a list of modeling program or animation program, just go and absorb it, grab it, eat it. There, there used to be a big flame war between 3D Studio users and Maya users. You know, they used to love to yell at each other, but the honest truth is they stole from each other over the years. If you knew one, if you know a package, it's very easy to pick up any other package. It's just a matter of where do they put my modeling tool at just find it. Yeah, like a lot of the code in Maya is actually XSI code. Um, the new, this is Ford versus Chevy kind of thing. The animation, in, and like John was saying earlier, the animation in Maya is unbelievable. Keep in mind, is unbelievable. It's just the way that it's organized. But you model in another package, you know, Z Rush or XSI. Well, didn't they add uh, the DNA that would model in like Lightwave? Yeah, it's really weird. Like uh, Espresso or something? We used, they used it on the on a series, they used uh, Puppet Master. Yeah. And then we started using uh, Project Messiah. Yeah. And then that was the animation tool because the animation tools inside Lightwave are not very good. And they would model Chris, but they modeled in Lightwave because Lightwave is one of the very first packages that had kind of a subdivision services type feel to it. And you had an OpenGL view up here that you could, you could rotate. Um, but that is spilling over these other applications. Uh, but yeah, we, we moved around a couple of times. But then in the movie Barnyard, I, wouldn't, I didn't work on Barnyard, but um, they brought an XSI to, to, to do a lot of modeling. And I think they still piped up the rendering through Lightwave. So you will get your hands, uh, the point was that you're going to get your hands on a lot of different programs anyway. Uh, just just learn one, learn it well, become a very good animator, very good model, or whatever it is that you want to do, and you'll do well. Here's a, here's a really quick story about, uh, it doesn't matter what software, um, when I was learning all this pretty software, and I guess 3D Max was 
pretty low number. Um, you know, very informed where people said this software is better than the next. XSI back then, I think it was like ten to fifteen thousand dollars of the license. And you know, among my friends, we're all complaining about, oh, I can I know this expensive package versus you. Well, there's this guy that was using um, hash power animator at the time. It was like three hundred dollars, right? Guess what? We're all complaining about these expensive software and how we know how to use them. He takes three hundred dollars software, produces something called um, Killer B. Yeah. And he was hired. He was hired as the, one of the. Um, he was hired as one of the um, animation uh, supervisors, directors on Matrix Reloaded. Yeah. So it does not matter. It's hype. It's, hype. it's like some Maya and Soft Mars. They are excellent, but it's a lot of hype. Yeah. It's like you're like, oh, I gotta learn that. You know, I gotta have to do this. But it, if you, you can make like hash, like if you can spit something out, give it to an executive that says, well, I'm gonna buy this. You know, it's like that's all. You, if that's your whole point, you know, if you want to make your own content, that's all you got to do. Excuse me, get in your hands. I mean, we were using 3ds Max. We hated the modifier stack, but that's the only thing we had. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we, that's the only thing we had back in school. That's the only modifier stack, especially Uh, Chris. Um, I was just gonna ask you if it's better or does it help you get a job if, if you actually put on your resume that you have, like, or you put in a demo reel that like you have XSI animations, my animations, and you know, X other animation software. And you say like you model this in ZBrush, or this in XSI, or you know, and you just have a variety of skills and different packages that you can show off with that to be a good thing to have in your portfolio. But I don't think it will hurt. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like the help. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, you can adapt. Yeah, but if you have skills that you can adapt to, if you like, for example, Pixar, they have Pixar University. Um, you walk in there, and you may know nothing about 3D software, but you're a good animator, say. It. 2D animator, and they teach you their software proprietary. Uh, they may have Maya or XSI, you know, on you know, somewhere, but it's proprietary. They have to go in and learn that stuff. It's so slow. It's very slow. Yeah. It's like the stuff that we're doing now, like in, you know, like what we did in Maya and Soft Mars today. You can you can do that. That's why they, their production team streamlined, but in a very different way. What we did, they couldn't do that in three hours. Like just because. They have the software, it's older, and they have it down to a T, but their production is or their assembly line is way different. Yeah. yeah. But it's like things are changing up, you know. I remember my question. Okay. All right. Um, when, when doing these shots, do you, when you first begin with the concept, do you, is it good to just take it all apart? Do you have a theme or do you have a basis? Do you start with the storyline or? You start with the setting, and how do you take it all apart? How do you, you, you how start do you put it all together? All right. If you have boards, if you're lucky enough to have boards, then you start with where you're like, all right, well, what's in these three shots? You look, or look at a, a series of like 10 shots. All right. We got some buildings. We have a couple of elephants. We have all these small, like, car, all these uh, beetle. All right. So you start picking apart what you need, right? And then you're like, all right, well, I don't have time to build an elephant. But I can't make a bunch of spears and like a trunk. All right, that's an elephant, good enough. Make it great. Uh, you know, you start picking apart and just, just build it all. You need something to start with. And you, you start looking, all right, well, what time of day is it? You know, daytime, nighttime, snow, rain, whatever. And then try to make a scene that's, that kind of represents <coughs> that. Very quick, you don't have to be all perfect. And get a camera, get a camera with the right lens on it. And you go, just start, start keyframing, start uh, you know, kicking out your shots.